Hello, I'm Susanna Rymack, and I'm here today just to introduce Larry Boy, who's going to share a little bit of uh, his thoughts and, and some <laughs> ideas on where we should go. And I'll get you to maybe sure. introduce yourself and, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> what the topic is, and, and, and then again, where we should go with it. Sure. My name is Larry Boy, and I'm the vice chair of the board of Public Interest Alberta, and also the chair of the uh, Democracy Task Force. I've been involved with uh, Public Interest Alberta since the beginning, and uh, one of the reasons I've been involved in it is that I think we need a way to bring individuals and organizations together to promote the kind of directions that a lot of us seem to b believe in, uh, because uh, it's going in the wrong direction right now. The ship is moving uh, in the wrong direction and we have to turn it around. And we've been involved in trying to nudge this super tanker in a different direction uh, ever since we started the organization. Um, when you say the wrong direction, what do you what do you mean by the wrong direction? What specifically is that? And then what what is the solution? What direction sure. should we be steering? It's important to know what the problem is, and then it's also or the problems are, and then it's also equally or more important to have a strong sense of what we should do about it. <clears throat> the The fundamental problem is we are losing our public services to privatization. It's it's really that simple. Uh, we've seen education, health care, social services systematically and deliberately undermined. And the result is that families and individuals are lacking the supports that they should have in all of these areas, and they're increasingly paying more. Mm -hmm. So they're paying more individually, and they're getting less. And that ranges from families who have a, an aged mother or father or other family member no longer getting access to the long-term care they need. Mm -hmm. They end up uh, in long lineups at hospitals. They end up in acute care beds because there are no long-term care beds available. And who does the responsibility fall on? Individuals and families. The same thing is happening in healthcare, a deliberate attempt to push it onto individuals and families. In education, class size is growing, more responsibility for parents to pay school fees. It's a trend and it's not an accident. Private, the, the, the current kind of, the market will solve everything ideology is at the heart of this. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, creating uh, uh, um, opportunities to undermine public services and the public good in the process and creating opportunities for private provision, I call them the privateers, to step in and make money on it. So increasingly there's an attempt to push our healthcare system, education system, even, even our social welfare uh, system, into the hands of private people who will make profits on it instead of delivering needed human rights. And I really believe that education and healthcare and social supports are human rights, but they're being increasingly pushed into an opportunity to make profits for individuals and the result in our society is an enormous and growing inequality and a lack of the very public services that make our lives richer and um, give us the opportunity to live reasonable lives. So in terms of <clears throat> what to do about it, well, one of the things that um, they, this uh, hyper-capitalism, this capitalist fundamentalism is really what it is, is that, is that the market will solve all your problems and cheaply. What you have to do is push back, but you have to push back in really smart ways. And you have to demonstrate that public provision is better not just for families but the whole society. Let me give you an example in education. Mm -hmm. The more you push post-secondary, onto individuals and families, the more you squeeze out people without the resources out of the system. They get turned away, there aren't enough slots available in universities. So what happens? Well, Alberta has a participation rate in post-secondary of 18% and the rest of the country averages 24%. That's not only not good for those individuals and families who don't have someone going to university or, or colleges, it's not good for the whole society because it results in an undereducation. I think that markets were never designed to deliver a service to everyone. That's the flaw in the whole argument of market fundamentalism. Markets were designed to sort winners from losers, those who get from those who don't. 
And so it's a terrific mechanism to decide who gets the big screen color TVs mm -hmm. or the Mercedes-Benz cars. Mm -hmm. But it, it was never designed to, to deliver health care and education to everyone. It's the wrong model. And we have to propose a much better, better model. And by the way, we have to pay for it. Yeah. We have to be prepared to pay for it in, in the form of taxes. And first of all, we have to make corporations and wealthy individuals pay their fair share, and a lot of them are escaping it, yeah. but we also have to be prepared, prepared to pay for the public services that we value. So I believe <laughs> the theme of the conference is a fair and just Alberta for all, and, and you kind of spoke to that in some of your uh, proposed solutions in terms of uh, the market really not being the answer, but uh, you know, in, in opposition to that, it, it's tax reform. Is that is that what you're saying? Would you say, or what else? <clears throat> well, I think there are three things. Sure. Number one, we have to to outline what we believe are the priorities for strong public services. That people have to know what you want and why you want. Okay. Number two, we need revenue reform. We we cannot have the flat tax and such low corporate taxes in this provinces, and we shouldn't. We need revenue reform to pay for those public services. We also need democratic reform. We have a yawning democratic deficit. Alberta is the least democratic place in this country. And above all, we need campaign and finance, party finance reform. You can give, wealthy individuals can give $30,000 a year at an election year to, to individuals, and they do. You know, they, we, we have a situation where wealthy and corporate interests basically control the system. And it's legal to do so. At the federal level, they've capped contributions at $1,200. They've outlawed uh, uh, corporate and union contributions. And they have in place funding, spending limits. So it's quite possible to do this. It's already being done in the country. And Alberta, in particular, has to make these changes. But they won't happen unless the citizens of Alberta demand them. Thank you. Thanks very much for your time and for your, your thoughts and input. It's been great listening to you and speaking with you a bit. Great. It's good to have this kind of discussion. It should be happening everywhere. Absolutely.